welcome to yet another episode of the Halal Food, Food Podcast. Today we are very pleased to have an expert uh, in the UAE uh, market, meat market. So we will be talking about uh, what is expected in the uh, to get products there and how the market is at the minute. Uh, the UAE market is, is one of the most important markets in the Middle East uh, because of uh, different reasons. Uh, first, uh, tourism is at its peak in the region and we also know that the population is around 11 million, 88.5% uh, of which is expats. So the majority of the population in the UAE uh, is an expat population. They also have a high uh, a GDP per capita around uh, almost 90,000, uh, double the GDP capita per capita of the UK and far more than the GDP per capita per capita of many countries within the e, uh, within the EU. So it's an important market. We also know that they, they spend a lot of money on uh, on food. Uh, food is a part of their culture uh, in terms of festivals, in terms of religious uh, activities and, and things like that. So we are pleased to have uh, Mr. Sadiq with us today. So I'm going to invite Sadiq to introduce himself before we start the podcast. Sadiq. Well, my name is Abu Bakr Sadiq Suleimana. I'm a seasoned protein, livestock, uh, agriculture specialist based in the UAE. Thank you for the opportunity, Awal. And I'm very happy and excited to be yeah. on this podcast. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so, uh, as I said, we are, we are pleased to have you on this podcast. And I was with you last month in Dubai during uh, Gulf Food. Uh, so you said you, 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 you've been in the, in the, in the industry for, for some time. What, uh, what, what, what is your main role? What, what do you do uh, in, in your day-to-day -day activity? So just to take you through, look, uh, I started from the scratch. And what I mean from the scratch, I never had the experience of working in a distribution, uh, I mean, in a distribution company. So when I started, I mean, for me, red meat was something that I took very, very, I took the passionate on learning the product because visiting hotels and restaurants and working very closely with chefs, what I mean chefs from the culinary directors, executive chefs, butchers, and even low rank chefs in the hotels and restaurants, I saw that there was a great opportunity for red meat. So what I did, I worked very closely with a very reputable uh, institutions that was offering trainings for red meat. Then, this took me on and gave me that exposure. And now any, 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 any way you find uh, any training or any work, uh, workshop that talks about red meat and lamb, Abu Bakr Sadiq Suleiman will be there. That is very, that, that's a very good point you've made there. Uh, look, we, we are all immigrants. Uh, I also moved from, from Ghana to the UK uh, in 2004. And what I've always told my children is that, look, if you are in a country that you are new to, you have to do more. You always have to work more. You have to learn more. So I'm, I'm pleased that you, you've just indicated that you had to do so many training. And that's what we, we've all had to, uh, to do to be able to improve uh, and add value to ourselves. So that is really, really good. Uh, point you have made there. So I want us to dive straight into the meat industry in the UAE. Who are the main exporters to the UAE? Is it the uh, is, is your uh, is your meat mainly from Europe? Is it from South America? Is it from Australia? Where is the bulk chunk of the meat to the Middle East come from? You've asked a very intelligent question. Uh, Middle East is dominated by number one Australians. Number two, the Americans. I'm talking about the high-end meat. And then number three, you have the Brazilians, New Zealand, South Africa, and India, Pakistan, Kenya, and Sudan. So, but when you go into the lamb, uh, yes, there Australia is still a very. Uh, I mean, they dominate here. Um, I, I would just say that. Australia dominates in the lamb business as well as the UK lamb. Since when you join HDB, we've seen that uh, awareness that you have created in this region, and that has also spiked the interest of people now shifting from Australia to the British lamb. 
Yeah, that's that's a good point. So I, I will come back to 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 British lamb uh, again. What makes Australian lamb more appealing to the people? Is it because of price? Is it because of quality? What characteristics? Because when I when I come to the Middle East, not just in the UAE, people talk about Australian lamb, Australia, and it, and it's across the Middle East. It's not just in one country. Why are people buying into Australia? First of all, they've been here before any other. Yeah. Uh, country. Very good point. And number two, very... number two, number two, the government of Australia, I mean, is hugely involved supporting farmers and manufacturers to promote Australian made goods in this region. And number three, I have been to Australia a couple of times. They attach passion to the farming. You know, they take care of the cattle like their own babies. And number three, Look, the product itself is good. It has a flavor and chefs loved it. So just to let you, I mean, just to let you know, look, Australians, they, 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 they are really dominating in terms of the lamb and the beef in this region, to be very honest with you. Because, yeah. I mean, it is, it, is, it, is, it is a support that they're getting from the government. Can you just imagine every uh, Gulf food event that is organized here, it is the government of, of Australia that take everything on behalf of the farmers and then invite them to come. So it is something that they really take it very seriously. So yes, quality is there. There's consistency on the quality. Yeah. There's consistency of supply and, and price is a fluctuation matter. You know, yeah. price is something that comes at the last bottom, but quality is something that the Australians don't joke with. Yeah, you've made another good point about uh, the government's support for, for the Australian market. And I also note that they have been there for a long time. The UK is just starting to get into, into, into the Middle East and we, we, are, we are investing some time and resources into, into the region. And uh, it's, it's, it's also important to acknowledge the UK government's uh, support in the region. Uh, at the last Gulf Food, I know they had a pavilion and even previous Gulf Food. So I was actually at the pavilion as well trying Trying to support in some of the live cookery uh, demonstrations, so that is a good point, and I'm I'm hoping people who are listening will take note of this. Now let's let's look. Now at... just to add just to yeah. add one more thing. Look, uh, I think this is something that the British government should also start thinking of doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Australian government they have an institution here called Emily Meat and Livestock Australia. So what they do, they work directly with distributors and they organize seminars, training to educate distributors, to educate chefs who normally don't know the difference between a tenderloin and a ribeye and kibro. Just to set you one example, ribeye, kibro is the same product, but there are some instances where, a, I mean, a chef will tell you, I want a ribeye. You say, oh chef, that's kibro. And so if you don't explain it very well, yeah. You seem to have a bit of uh, misunderstanding. I think when you came into uh, HDB, I mean, yes, I normally used not to see or see any activities happening. But when you came into the picture, we saw that, yes, there were a lot of activities. But you guys could still do more and really, really uh, invest more in your marketing. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's just a marketing strategy. Absolutely. Uh, there, there's, if, if we want to be at the same level with the Australians, there is, there's a lot of investment that we need to do. As you say, they have a presence there. MLA is in there. We did have a, uh, well, at, as we speak on the 30th of, of March, 2024, we have a, an agent there, but uh, we, are, we are looking to, 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 to revamp our operations in the, in the region. So there's more we need to do uh, in that aspect. So I wanted us to also look at uh, the UK products. I know UK products are, are relatively expensive than uh, Australian products. What, and also, look, it's, it's important to acknowledge uh, the work we've done with Golden Dunes. When you were with Golden Dunes, they did they did a great deal of... Uh, they, 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 did, they did well to, 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 to import a lot of uh, UK lamb whilst you were there, and you also played a role in importing UK lamb to, to, to the UAE. Now we have other uh, importers in the UAE that are, that are uh, importing UK products, and we have products in spinach and other things, uh, in other places. 
from in your opinion where do you normally find uk products where or where should we target should we target retail should we target hotels should we target food service where where do you think we, we should target we should put our energies in so first of all uh you've got a lot of british expats in this part of the world called uae a beautiful country so i would say retail is number one okay. that uk products can easily go in yeah. huge volume why because uh, this is where you have uh, an opportunity to to add more skus food yeah. service yes but the volume of food service would not be as much as the volume of retail because retail just if you take one retail shop uh, for example, Lulu, Carrefour, they've got multiple locations. Yeah. So strategically, I, I suggest that, yes, retail should be number one target for UK products. And number two, food service, restaurant, fine dining restaurant, and then uh, hotels, resorts. Yeah. So in terms of retail and food service, how do we get in there? Do we get the, the category buyers to come in and taste our products or do we take the products to them to taste I know in food service we can invite chefs to do some 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 cooking and tasting. What what in your opinion is the best way to get access to retailers and also to food service? So first of all, what I know is the best approach is the government of UK should select very key uh, retail distributors here. Okay, I'm talking about the bigger ones. Yeah. Let's say Carrefour, Lulu, Choitram, Wetrose. They should invite them to the UK and then showcase to them the, the products that the UK government really wants to promote to the retail division here in UAE. And yeah. then from there, the discussion starts from there. Just to add, this is this is the same way these Australians are doing. They go directly, they tap directly with the uh, with the retail giants here, and then they invite them, take them to Australia for a tour. They see all the plants, see what is happening. And then when they come here, it becomes very easy for things to go. So the best approach is, yes, what you guys are doing, you are doing excellently well. But look, there is room for improvement. And I think that you've got the best product. I have tasted your product in a couple of events. The expo, which was wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, so, so, so I mean, something that uh, uh, your government should look into. Yeah, thank you for that point. Uh, so we do have uh, inward and outward missions. So in terms of the inward missions, I, I agree with you. We may need to focus on just inviting retailers at one point or inviting uh, food service at, at another point, because with that, you can tailor your activities around what they do. But if you have a mixed uh, delegation, it, it's always difficult to, to, to handle them. So yeah, that's now Just to add, yeah. I'm not cutting you. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, this same approach works for we distributors. Assuming you are a chef and I come to you and I talk about 10, 15, 30 products. I will look, you are a human being. It's not everything that you can remember. But if I tell that, look, Chef Owl, uh, look, my company is, is located here. I'm inviting you to our warehouse. Come and see what we do. Come and see our products. The minute you step into our offices, or the minute you step into our warehouse and see the kind of products that we have, once you go back to the kitchen, anytime you have some sort of idea, oh, this company has this, this company has that. So I think it is a best approach for us to take. Yeah, that's that's a very that's a very useful point. Now I know we we're talking about uh, lamb and, and and sheep meat. Uh, the UK is the third largest export of sheep meat in the world, so we we've got enough uh, uh, protein in terms of uh, small ruminants. But we are also looking to build our our beef uh, our beef uh, offering in the Middle East. I know uh, in the UAU at the minute we can only export boneless uh, beef. Have you tried UK beef before, or is this something that is very difficult to find? I tried UK beef, but I'm looking forward to try it one day. I did my own research, and I came to know that. There is the reason why it's not here that much is because of the halal certification or something like that. But I think you guys, I mean, British beef has a greater potential in this market. So this is something you should really look at. What I've tried is the UK lamb. 
which was fantastic and delicious yes yes so i can assure you that the uh, the british uh beef too is very very delicious but you've mentioned a very important point that our products our beef is not in the uae and other middle east countries because of slaughter method that is true uh we we're working on that uh i know the main method that we use in the uk is what is called the, the penetrative captive bolt method that is not accepted in the middle east so any any policy makers listening to us uh, should should also uh, give you some thoughts. We are working to see how we can align our slaughter methods into the well with with the the Middle East uh, method because we know beef too is huge in the UK. Normally we talk about lamb, lamb, lamb and mutton, but beef we know beef is a huge market in the Middle East as well. So in terms of beef, who are the main uh, exporters to 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 uh, to the Middle East or to the UAE? The UAE is uh, Australia. Uh, I mean, talk, I'm talking about, yeah, I'm talking about the high end, yes, yeah. the Angus, Black Angus, Wagyu. Then uh, when you talk about the commodity side, you are, you are talking about Brazil, Brazilian beef, Minerva, GJ, and uh, 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 the rest of the brands. South African beef also is very strong here. So when you come down to the mid-range, you're, you're talking about Brazilian beef, a, a commodity beef, which is very massive here. Volumes are very high, which goes to the retail, food service, QSR, and some hotels and restaurants use that as well. And then when you go to the lower, lower grade, we're talking about the Indian buffalo, Pakistani yes. beef, Kenyan, and Tanzanian as well. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, the, the products from the likes of Pakistan, India, Africa, where do they end up in? Uh, are they in the retail yeah. or they are just in uh, in the in the small restaurants? Exactly. So say two way thing. Yeah. Majority of them end up being the retail okay. and some hotels who want to cut cost when they who really want to cut cost but still use a quality product. Yeah. Some goes to the hotels and restaurants. Yes. Look, after COVID-19, uh the the issue of quality went down a lot and price came price is priority. But there are some properties who still want to maintain that premium product and pay that price. So it's just like having a Ferrari, having a Toyota Yaris. There are people who can still afford to buy Ferrari, and there are people who also want to go for Toyota right? Uh, I'm Toyota Yaris. Yes. Yeah, so yes. Yeah. So uh, another question I've got in my mind is uh, if there is a an exporter in the UK looking the person is new they just want to access the the uae market what what advice would you give them what is the first thing they need they need to do so first thing they need to do they need to come down here uh they need to come down to this region do so once they come down they need before coming down they need to spot or do a research who are the major distributors or suppliers in this region that's point number one point number two they need to reach out engage with them, try to understand what sort of products they may require to get from the UK to sell to their end product, I mean, their end customers here in this region. And number three, they they have to make sure that they comply with the rules yeah. of UAE. The rules are number one. If you, if you don't follow the rules, then I don't think your products will get even into this uh, country. So these are the three main things I would advise. Okay, okay. Price should be price should be last part of the discussion. They should make sure that they have the consistency of supplies all the time. They can meet that quality. What happens is that sometimes most of the producers or farmers or manufacturers come down here. They they speak too much, and once you start buying from them, they start giving you excuses. Oh, unfortunately, we don't have this. We don't have. That. But we understand how the pattern of how uh, the pattern of growing the livestock and slaughtering them, how the process goes, we understand. Sometimes doing business, you just have to be very open to your customers yeah, because being open to them will let, the, I mean, will let you win their heart and trust as well. So they can just close their eyes and deal with you because they know the information that you are going to give them, you are giving them accurate information and you won't cheat them. So the most important thing is telling the truth and keeping your integrity clean. Telling, yes, I can do this. I cannot do this now. Because we understand that production comes in badges. So if they give you a volume, I'm sorry, I can't do this at this minute. My next production kill will, will happen this, then I, I will be able to meet your demand. 
it's all about open communication and having the right products at the right price point yeah so another question i've got in my mind is uh what about frozen and chilled which one uh, is 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 better to export uh to, to the uae is, is there preference for frozen products or is there pre uh, preference for chilled products yes i mean the mainly what people require is the chilled product because people want to serve chilled products to their uh, guests but what happened is that some some of the major players distributors prefer to have frozen for because of the longer shelf life yeah you know about chill you have a shorter shelf life so that means if the product comes and you don't have a stronger team to liquidate it immediately you end up running promotions and cutting your margins yeah so but uh, i mean it's in both i mean uh, based on the situation uh yes i say chilled is coming frozen is coming but most prefer people prefer to use chilled products yeah okay and majority of the frozen products goes to the retail shops oh, so my, yeah okay. yeah majority goes to retail yeah what about mutton and lamb is it is, is mutton uh required uh or in in high demand in 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 uh in in, in the UAE. UAE, the reason why I'm asking this is that in Europe, uh, although my, there, there is a huge consumption of mutton, but that is just, if you look at the consumption of mutton in the UK, for instance, it's mainly the, the Muslims that consume mutton. Mutton, that mainly consume mutton. Mutton is not readily or, or generally consumed within the general population. What is the situation in the UAE? It's a huge demand. Mutton is used here hugely. Okay. All the biryani uh, restaurant, Pakistani, Indian, I mean, it's a huge commodity product that is used here. So if you have a distributor or manufacturer or a producer or a farmer, tell them that, look, the UAE is a place for them to go. Mutton, six-way card, all this are uh, used here in UAE. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, and the mutton, how, right. normally, how do you import mutton? Is it imported as whole carcasses or is it... Cut into six weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks. Okay. Six weeks. Okay. Okay. So six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. Is, yeah, is six weeks. Go. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and what about the packaging on it or uh, of it? Is it just put in boxes or is there a special way of of, of packaging it or vacuum pack? Yeah. Some. Yeah. Yeah. So some 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 put it in vacuum packed. Yeah. yeah. Normally they all come in vacuum packed, six week cuts, and it goes it goes very quickly. Yeah. Majority of them are being sold in supermarkets. Okay. majority okay. okay yeah so if you have a, a i mean i mean a producer or a manufacturer yeah tell them that look you is a place for them to go and pitch and get the volume of mutton yeah mutton is hugely used here nice one nice one i i normally i don't deal with uh chicken products but i just thought this is an opportunity for us to talk about chicken as well poultry uh where, where is the majority of poultry to the uae come from brazil Oh, Brazil. Brazil, they are dominating here. Brazil, they are dominating here because they are dominating here. Frozen. Okay. Yes, Brazil. All right. And no one can, yeah, no one can, no one can compete in terms of that. But look, there are a few European countries who, I mean, have chilled uh, uh, chicken. But I tell you, majority of the, distribu the distributors prefer frozen. So Brazil is dominating here. And but look, our the price of chicken also fluctuates a lot very yeah. difficult business to do and so the brazilians they know how to they know the secret i'm telling you okay okay <laughs> they know the secret. just uh as a rough idea if we were to go to the uh to the market today in in dubai to buy uh chicken what will a whole chicken cost say a two kilogram uh chicken roughly i'm just I, just to give you a rough idea recently recently yeah. due to the red sea issue where you had a blockage of ships that was not able to bring stocks you know the price of chicken went up from 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 seven or from six to nine or ten dirham per kilo whole chicken wow wow what's yeah nine because, dirham because per kilo. yeah because what happened is the demand was there stock was not available yeah 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 but normally normally whole chicken price is is somewhere around five to six or seven or eight yeah but this time around due to the scarcity shipment was not coming in prices escalated wow wow 
I think we've exhausted uh, so, uh, the questions I, 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 I prepared to ask. So what I'm going to do, so what, what would be your advice to anybody trying to come to the UAE, to, trying to uh, use, uh, export their products to the UAE? What, what, what would be your, your, uh, your advice to them? No, I will tell them that UAE is the best place for them to come. Yeah. There are opportunities everywhere. What they have to do, they have to be consistent with whatever they are offering, consistent in supply, consistent in quality. Yeah. And I tell you, you is a place. Everyone is coming here and we are so grateful and thankful to Allah yeah. for, 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 I mean, for this great nation. The authorities here make sure that our tourism is booming, our hospitality is booming. And so, I mean, it's the best place for every exporter who wants to do business should come to Dubai. And if they need some sort of support, they can contact you and you can uh, put me in touch with them and I will give them some sort of support. But UAE is open. It's open. Like Sheikh Mohammed said, the doors are open. People should come in. But make sure that you do not step on the toe of somebody. Respect the laws of the country. Yep. Don't take shortcuts. Do things correctly. And, you know, it's, it's, it's sweet, sweet, sweet home. Yeah, that's a good point you've mentioned in terms of respe respecting local uh, r laws. Because, look, we know the Middle East is a Muslim majority region. So you have to, you have to respect the culture. You have to respect the religion. If you go to a place, I, I was chatting to somebody who got deported from Saudi because he was he was caught drinking. If if the, if the rules are that you cannot drink, why, why would you want to drink? If the rules are that uh, you cannot uh, express uh, affection publicly, why would you do that? If you go to Rome, you do what the Romans do. So thank you very much. And for those of us, uh, those exporters who may be listening to us, looking to access the Middle East market, I would say in terms of UK products, Kuwait is by far our biggest market. The UAE is also big. Saudi is, is one of the biggest, well, is the biggest in, in, in the Middle East not for UK product, but biggest in terms of animal protein. So if you are looking at accessing that, that part of the world, uh, that is another area you should look, look at. Qatar is, is another one. So there are so many opportunities yeah. in the region that people can, can access. So before we end, Sadiq, you said you, you were preparing a report. I just, wanna, uh, just want you to give our listeners and viewers what the report entails. So uh, in this report, uh, in our next session, I would be sharing it with you and we discuss it with our viewers. It talks about all the cuts that, that comes here, beef, lamb, and chicken. Uh, I've made it in segments, segment instead of a uh, segment in pricing, product type, oh, nice. uh, I mean, delivery channels and future opportunities. And, uh, you know, so in our next discussion, I will, I will, I'll make it available to you and our cherished viewers. And I must say that thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to be part of this wonderful podcast. And I look forward to attending the next session. I will. Thank you very much, Sadiq. Inshallah, I will get in touch with you, with you again. But uh, the podcast will be available on YouTube, on Apple and Google Podcasts. It will also be up, available on Spotify. So thank you very much. Thank you, Awal. Salaamu Alaikum. Ramadan Kareem. Salaamu Alaikum. Ramadan Kareem. Salaamu Alaikum.